I have a Stanley number eight jointer plane that I want to show you. I'm going to do a little cleanup with it and then joint a board just to give you an idea of how they work. The number eight really is a huge plane. It's 24 inches long. I've got it here next to a number seven and a number six just to give you an idea of what they look like side by side. This one is an 8C, C to stand for corrugated. It has that corrugated bottom. It's a fairly early plane. It's got the early trademark on the blade and the early dates on the body. You can see that the plane is actually in pretty decent shape. What I'm going to do is just clean up some of the parts tune the frog. Uh, I think I'm going to refinish both the tote and the knob and um, just clean a few areas up, sharpen the blade, and then spend some time jointing a board and just uh, to give an idea of how a super long plane like this, again 24 inches long, helps you to get a straight cut, a straight jointed board uh, from boards of a fairly long length. You can see this knob and tote were actually in pretty good shape. The tote has been broken. I'm going to take some time to sand um, down that joint so that you don't feel it anymore and it's just a little more uh, cleanly delineated on the tote. I'm doing just a few little cosmetic things to the body. This plane had a I think someone has repainted it. I don't think that's original Japaning that nice, as old as the plane is, but uh, it's got a decent paint job on it. So I'm just doing a few little cosmetic things, kind of shining up some of these ridges and these rims so that the plane just has a little bit more sparkle. And I'm just rubbing off some of the old oxidation that was on that old steel. The plane really is in remarkable shape. It's remarkably flat and uh, in really, really good condition. I uh, spent a little time with a sander, um, just a little sander attachment on the end of my drill. Again, just to sort of polish up those ridges of the body. I always think these look nice when they don't have uh, paint splotches on them and, uh, and are not as oxidized as the steel can sometime get, sometimes get to where those edges are almost as black as the plain body is. This way, I just think it adds a little uh, kind of a nice look and again if you keep the plane in a dry shop and take good care of it the rust won't come back and so it's pretty easy to keep a plane nice once you've done a cleanup. The uh, frog I removed both the lateral adjuster and the yoke by punching out those two pins because the frog was a little bit rough and it was a little bit uh, I don't know just rough. And so I'm spending some time just getting a nice smooth flat surface on the front side of the frog. It's not that it wasn't flat, it just didn't look real good. And I like that uh, mating surface where the plain blade and the frog meet to be a nice, nice smooth flat surface. It actually even allows the plane to adjust easier once you've got the lever capped, cap uh, tightened down. So you can see that frog ended up turning up pretty nice and I feel like I got a very uh, consistent surface on all of that mating surface. Just basically rubbing it on some sandpaper on a piece of glass to ensure a flat surface. I just gave a quick polish to the uh, mating area of the lever cap there. I, you saw that it just took a few seconds really. Now I've got the uh, the tote and the knob, uh, I think, I'm not positive that they used a lacquer finish, but I know that lacquer thinner removes the finish that is on typical Stanley knobs and totes. And so I'm th just basically washing these with lacquer thinner and a small brush. And between that brush and some steel wool soaked in lacquer thinner, you can really rub the 
finish off fairly easily. So I basically am rubbing the finish off of the knob, getting it down to bare wood as much as I can. It had some dings and dents in it. It had some paint splotches on it. So this gets it down to more of a consistent look and a consistent color. And I did the same with the knob, or excuse me, with the tote. The tote needed a lot more work. So the first thing I did is using the lacquer thinner, I just removed the finish to get it down to bare wood. And then I took the sander to it to mainly level out that joint where this tote had been glued together. The rest of the tote is in such great shape and it's such a nice original look that I just didn't want to re-break it and re-glue it or try to make a new one or pick one off of another plane. I wanted it to be the original that came with the plane. So here you can see I'm just spending some time sanding down that joint. I was trying to get it as smooth as I could so that at least when you picked up the plane and looked at it or glanced at it, you didn't, your, your attention was not drawn to the glue line on that part of the tote. And it did, it sanded up really nice. It sanded up really level. I put a coat of oil-based stain on it and then a couple coats of paste wax. And both the tote and the knob, I think, came out really good. Uh, they look nice, they look original, they're not too glossy, they're not too dull, very smooth in the hand, and uh, I think they turned out really well. Here I've taken the knob now and I've just stuck an old bolt in it, put it in the chuck of my drill press, and took some sandpaper to it to give it a nice smooth feel, a nice smooth um, profile. And well, this works great. You just spin it in the uh, drill press or you can spin it on a chuck mounted in your lathe and uh, take the sandpaper to it. It, uh, it sanded off uh, very cleanly. You're able to sand down enough to get some of the dings out to where it was going to accept the finish really, really well. Again, with the sides and the bottom of the plane body, I, the, this plane, like many of the planes I've picked up over the years, was in remarkably good shape. I just took a kind of a little a wire brush attachment on my drill and just gave it kind of a once over, taking any uh, little rough spots off, but there really weren't any little rough spots. But I did this just to kind of give it a little bit of a shine, but not too much. I, uh, I gave it a super light sanding after the wire brush and then as I do with all of these planes I put a coat or two of paste wax on them to preserve them uh, from any further rust or oxidation. And every plane I've done this to sits on my shelf and they stay, they stay looking just like they look when I finish them. So it seems to be a pretty successful method to just do a light sanding and a couple of nice heavy coats of paste wax on the steel. Here's a dark stain. I wanted to get these with a little bit of red tint to them. Uh, I really can't tell what they are. I think they're beechwood, but they might just be a super light rosewood. It's really hard for me to tell. They took the stain really nicely. They took it fairly uh, uniformly. So I just gave them a coat of stain, let them sit overnight. And then, like I say, the next day I put a coat of paste wax on them. Now I'm just taking all the screws and nuts and, and knobs, etc., and just giving them a little shine up. And it's easiest to do this by just spinning them in the lathe. As I do with all of these things, I start with about a 200 pa 220 paper, go to a 400 paper, then a 600 paper, and then a little polishing rouge. And you can get every nut and bolt and screw head 
to be uh, nice and shiny and nice and uniform looking. And like I've said many, many times before, I just think they add to the nice look of the plane sitting on the shelf, sitting on the bench, to have all those screw heads and those pieces of brass shining and mirror-like. Uh, it just gives the appearance of a nicer tool. And I don't know, it just seems, why not? If they'll take a polish so easily, it's nice to just polish all these pieces to add sparkle. This is the little screw that is, in the, that is at the, uh, the toe end of the tote. And again, it was, it was just black with rust, but just a little bit of time with some sandpaper, a little file to clean up any little irregularities in the slot. And the two ends, up, or the, the, the screw head ended up with a very, very nice shine. Again, it's one of those things you see when you glance at the plane, and I just think it helps to, uh, to shine that up. This is the screw head of the uh, screw that goes into the uh, middle of the lever cap. And again, like all the other screws, it's steel. With just a little bit of time, a little bit of sandpaper, a little polishing, you can see you get a pretty nice look. Here I'm applying wax to the knob and the tote. I tend to apply wax with steel wool. I think the steel wool helps to take off any little fuzz left by the, uh, the raising of the grain that the stain put on the, the wood. The steel wool helps to break that down to smooth that surface off. I usually let that sit a while and then take a towel or a rag and buff it like you would any a buffed wax sur surface. You can see it gives a subtle shine uh, not a super glossy shine, but a, a subtle shine and it feels great in your hand and it looks really great up against that shining brass and that shining almost chrome-like screw on the tote at the back of a plane. So I've just mounted those two up here just like that. I'm putting the pin back in to mount the yoke back in the frog, I've put the pin back in uh, the uh, uh, lateral adjuster. They go together real easily. I shine those two screws up that hold the frog down to the plane body, adjust the frog as best I can, uh, and tighten that all up. Now the plane blade, you can see I put some marks on it with a felt pin. I do that when I begin just to make sure I've got my angle right as, if I, as I'm running that bevel over the sandpaper. If it takes the ink off the full length of the bevel, I know I've adjusted my angle right. And so I'm starting, this one wasn't um, perfectly 90 degrees with the world, so I've started with some fairly heavy paper here. I think this is 220 paper, and I'm just uh, grinding it down. Uh, keeping it wet to keep it cool and to take the slurry off of the paper and it didn't take long until I had a nice shiny even bevel the whole width of the plane blade. Then I go to a finer and a finer and a finer paper. Here I have some auto body paper. This is like a 2000 and a 4000 paper I have stuck to a piece of glass. I use that for a short time, then I move over to the diamond stone and get a final polish on that bevel, and then a very slight micro bevel. And I tell you, the plane was scary sharp. So I just simply put that back together with a chip breaker. I bring that chip breaker probably within about a sixteenth of an inch of the end of that blade, and then uh, mount it in the plane, lock it down and adjust it, and I'm going to give it a try here, jointing a board. Here's about a six foot long board. This board had quite a dip in the middle, uh, a, quite a dip. And here's the strength of a 24 inch plane. The plane, as I ran it, the full length of the board was only taking wood off the first maybe six inches of the board and the last maybe six inches of the board. In fact, the first few passes maybe took wood off the first three inches of the board. 
and then the last three inches of the board. And then a little bit later, four, five, six inches, eight inches, pretty soon, I'm starting to get a shaving the full length of the board. And I don't know if the, what the proper way is, but I know for me that if I continue to, to plane with a two foot long plane and get a consistent shaving the full length of the board, I've got a flat board. You see me using my square there to make sure I was 90 degrees of the world. And uh, I ended up with a very nicely jointed board using my Stanley Bailey number eight corrugated jointer plane. Hope you've enjoyed this video. And if you have, please subscribe and thank you for watching. Here it is next to a number seven just to give you a comparison. Thanks again.